In this part we will develop an algorithm to get so-called HV drawings of trees, which are drawings like this one up here. So first, why would we want to have such drawings? For example, you can use them for so-called con-cell diagrams in Lisp. This is basically a visualization of Lisp programs. Or constructs that are memory objects, which can hold two values or pointer to values. For example, this one here. We have one memory object here. The first one is a value and the second one is a pointer. It goes to the right. This memory object here has two pointers. We put the first one downwards and the second one to the right. This has value and pointer, 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 pointer and value. So whenever the first one is a pointer, it goes downwards. Whenever the second one is a pointer, it goes rightwards. And that way we get a binary tree that we can visualize like this. So what are the drawing conventions and aesthetics? Try to list them for yourself first. So I will list three drawing conventions. First, we want the children to be vertically and horizontally aligned with the parent. Then we want bounding boxes of subtrees of the children to be disjoint. So if we look at this parent here, this subtree here has the orange bounding box and this subtree here has the pink uh, the bounding box and they should be completely disjoint. And transversely, these two bounding boxes are also disjoint from the bounding box of this subtree here because it's disjoint from the boundary box of their parent. And we want edges to be strictly down or rightwards. So we don't want this to be mirrored and go to the left. We always want to follow the rightwards or downwards directions from the roots to the leaves. And the drawing aesthetics, what do we want to minimize? Well, the height, the width, the area, you call it, we can choose what to. We can say only the height or only the width or the whole area. We can do whatever we want. To get HP drawings, we will again use a divide and conquer algorithm. So as input we get a binary tree, we produce an HV drawing. In the base case, we just have a single vertex and the bounding box is just the vertex itself. In the divide step, we again recursively apply the algorithm to draw the left and right subtrees and in the conquer, we merge them. There are basically two ways that we can merge the subtrees. The first is the horizontal combination. We place the left subtree directly below the parent and the right subtree we move to the right as far as we have to so that they don't overlap. And the second is the vertical combination. We just put the right subtree first and then we move the left subtree as far down as we have to so that they don't overlap. And with these combinations and choosing which one to take when, we get different algorithms that get different area bounds. If you want to minimize the area, then you have to be very smart. When do we use the horizontal combination? When do we use the vertical combination? And which area bounds do we get for that? There are many different algorithms that do that in a clever way. And they can get very complicated to analyze once you have some hard rules. In this lecture, we will focus on a very simple variation. We will always use the horizontal combination and try to figure out what we get from that. This is the so-called right-heavy HV layout. However, compared to the layer drawing, we will take one freedom. We will allow us to change the embedding now. We will place the larger subtree always to the right. In the layer drawing, we always put the left child to the left, the right child to the right. Here, we will now choose which one is the left and which one is the right child. If we don't do that, then we cannot get any good bounds. But if we are allowed to do that, then we can prove a nice area bound. And larger subtree we mean with regards to the size, which is just the number of vertices in it. So let's have a look. In the base case, we have just two vertices and with a parent, we just place them like this. Now we might add another one. This is the larger subtree, so we put it to the right and we combine them here. We might get another one. This is again larger, so we put it to the right and we merge them at the vertex here. So this is a drawing we might get. Now if we have a binary tree, what are the width and what are the height that we will get from this algorithm? What is your guess? Well, for the width, it can be pretty terrible. 
Since we always put the large subtree to the right, if the whole tree is just a path, we will always put the child to the right. And then the width will be exactly n minus 1. But what about the height? So we want to analyze how long is the path from here to here. Let's have a look. If we look at this subtree here, we said that the larger subtree is to the right. So how many vertices do we have here? It's less than half of the vertices in this orange subtree. So going from this subtree to this, we at least double the size of the tree. Again, compare this to this one here. This one is larger. Means when we go from the orange subtree to the larger orange one, we at least double the size. And the same when we go from here to here. So for every edge on this path, we at least double the size of the subtree. How many times can we double the 1 until we get to n? That's exactly log n times. So after at most log n steps, we have reached our n. And that means that the height of the soul drawing can be at most log n. So the area is order of n log n, which is already better than what we had for the layer drawings, where the area was order of n squared. How do we implement this in linear time? Well, the main difficulty is deciding which is the largest subtree. This we can do by just going bottom up through the whole tree first, so we do a post-order traversal, and we save at every vertex what is the size of the subtree rooted in me. That's pretty easy. And then we can in constant time compare which of those two is the larger one. And to get the exact coordinates, there's just one more information we have to store, which is at every vertex we have to remember what is the width of my subtree. So when we go here, we've already drawn the subtree, we have to remember what is the width of this. When we go here, we have to remember what is my width. And now if we combine them, the total width is just this width plus this plus 1. And we're done. That's all we have to do. This can easily be done in linear time. Let's get to our results. We compute for a binary tree with n vertices in linear time a drawing such that we get an HV drawing, so it's planar, orthogonal, that means only a horizontal vertical edges, and strictly right and downward. We have the width at most n minus 1. We have the height at most log n, thus the area is in order of n log n. And now the difference to before is that we again have simply an axially isomorphic subtrees that have congruent drawings, but now it's only up to translation. Now the axially are not mirrored because we changed the embedding. It doesn't matter if they are simply or axially isomorphic. We changed the embedding for all of them to be the same anyway, so they are just up to translation concurrent. This again can be generalized to general rooted trees. Again with some compromises. So we start at some vertex, we take the largest subtree, we put it to the right, but now there's only one vertical connection we can take. So for all the other subtrees, we ha might have to draw them diagonally with any angle. So we lose the orthogonal style here. To make sure that these subtrees have concurrent drawings, we also have to make sure that these are not ordered anyway, but this is actually the second largest, this is the third largest, this is the smallest, and so on. Otherwise, we don't get this property. Is the area we get from this algorithm optimal? No, not really. And we probably cannot do it with a divide and conquer approach, at least we don't know how. But with a dynamic program, we can compute the drawing with the minimum area. In the exercise sheet, I will give you an HV drawing algorithm that uses different rules, and there we will actually get order of n area. In the next part, we will have a look at radial layouts of trees.